Hello and good evening to everyone. Good evening to all our viewers who are joining us on YouTube and welcome to one and all. My name is Georgia Alvaranga. I'll be your host for this Wednesday night prayer and praise session. We're going to have a word of prayer and then we'll have the song of Med this a special song to welcome the Holy Spirit into our midst. So let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you so much for your mercies, your love and your grace towards us. Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for gathering us once more as we come to worship and praise you. We bring all our prayer requests unto you, dear Lord. And we pray that you will bless us tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul. I'll praise you, Lord, praise with my mouth, praise with my life. Everything I'll do, I'll praise you, Lord. Oh, oh. do I'll praise you Lord praise him praise him Jesus our blessed redeemer sing all worth his wonderful love proclaim hail him hail him highest archangels in glory Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him. Tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Oh, 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 everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord.
Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. You are tuned into the FWP Center, the first Seventh-day Adventist Church of White Plains. All right, so we're going to be doing our prayer request. If you have any prayer requests, please do join, do say them out in the chat. Let us know um, so we can pray on your behalf. I do have a few here that I'm going to say out. We're praying for healing for baby Maya, our church family who have lost loved ones. So we continue to keep Sister Blossom Reed, who lost her mom, in prayer. We pray for the sick and shut in. We're praying for our children, our church, and our elders. We're also praying for our outgoing pastor and also for our incoming pastor. We want to keep the poor and destitute in prayer and pray for our church family who are away on vacation. We want to all we also keep in prayer those who are in Mississippi who are having um, water problems due to flooding. We also want to pray for spiritual readiness for God's children and also for an anointing on the man of God tonight, Pastor Ivor Richardson. So these are the prayer requests that I have. We'll now invite Sister Virginia McDonald to pray for our prayer request, and she may have other prayer requests that would have come into her also. So I'm going to do a prayer song, which is hymn number 505 in our hymnals. I need the prayers of those I love. I need the prayers of those I love while traveling o'er life's rugged way that I may true and faithful be and live for Jesus every day. I want my friends to pray for me, to bear my tempted soul above, and intercede with God for me. I need the prayers of those I love. I want my friends to pray for me, to bear my tempted soul above, and intercede with God for me. I need the prayers of those I love. McDonald's. Dear Lord, please bow your heads, everyone. Good night. Please bow your heads. Dear Lord, you said wherever two or three are gathered together, there would you would be among us. And so we thank you this night, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. And with those who are in their homes and everyone who's watching wherever they are, your Holy Spirit is there. And we thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for returning Sister Alvaranga safely home. Lord, I thank you for keeping her safe, keeping her in good health. I pray for others and thank you, Lord, for others who might have traveled and have come back home. Dear Lord, I pray for the speaker. We're speaking at Wednesday night prayer meetings all over the world. Father, I pray for each and every one of them especially Pastor Richardson, who's going to be speaking for us tonight. Then, Lord, I pray for the bereaved. Oh, God, I pray for Sister Blossom Reed, who has lost her mother. I pray for the Maxwell family and others, Lord, you know who they are, not only in our church, but in the other churches, Lord. 
all over the world, there are wars. All over the world, there are so many terrible things happening to your children. Lord, I pray for your children everywhere. Father, there are those in the hospitals who are sick everywhere in the world, in this country, in this country and beyond, Lord. But in our own sphere, we have little Maya, who we have been praying for. She had surgery this week, oh Lord. And I ask you to lead, guide the hands of everyone who has to work with this little baby. Lord, I ask you please to strengthen her parents. I ask you, Lord, to strengthen her grandparents and her her family, rest of her family, her aunts, her family and friends, oh God. Encourage her parents, oh Lord, that they do not leave, lose hope. Provide for them in every way, Lord. There's such an expense going back and forth and trying to spend time with her and working. Lord, I ask you to bless this family. Oh God, there are those who are, who are shut in. They would like to come out to church. They would like to go about doing everyday things, but they cannot, oh Lord, for one reason or another, because of age or because of illnesses that confine them to their homes. Oh God, please bless them. Then Lord, I pray for those first responders, the firemen, the policemen, the nurses and doctors and janitorial staff in our hospitals who were stretched to the max during this last pandemic. And it is still ongoing, Lord. Some of them are suffering. They're suffering from the same uh, illnesses that affect people coming back from the war. They're stressed out. They have anxiety, Lord. So many of them have had family problems and dislocation. Lord, be with them, I pray. Then, Lord, I pray for the marriages in the church, for the singles in the church. I pray for the children, not only in our church, but in all the other churches and everywhere in the world. For the marriage, oh Lord, everywhere, because all children are yours, whether they are Shintoists or Hindus, whether they are Buddhists or Muslims, all people on this planet are your children. So Lord, help your children. Be with those, oh God, who have gone to school. Lord, there are so many school shootings, not just in our country, but in other parts of the world. Lord, I pray for those who are hungry tonight, not only here in this country, but in war-torn regions of the world, where people don't know if they'll be alive to see tomorrow morning. God, comfort your people. May your Holy Spirit put his arms around them and in the midst of chaos and war, give them peace. Lord, I pray for the students who have gone away to college. There's so many of them, Lord. You know each and every one. Father, please protect them. Protect them emotionally. Protect them physically. Protect their souls, oh God. Help them to choose good friends. Lord, please remember everyone who is listening tonight. We all have needs that we, we all have needs. But before the needs, Lord, I have to present praise to you. Praise for everything, the blessings that you have given to us today. Oh, God, thank you for you have blessed each and every one of us. Lord, help us not to look at the things we don't have, but at the things you have blessed us with. And may our praise ascend on high a sweet incense to you, Lord. Father, remember, O oh God, each need presented here tonight. Lord, please be with everyone that was mentioned, the poor, the sick, those who are heartbroken because of bereavement. Be with them all, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We just want to thank Sister McDonald for praying on behalf of our prayer request. And just to let you know that it's not too late to share your prayer request. When you share your prayer request, um, we will hand them over to our prayer team. All right. So now it's time for our speaker. Our speaker tonight is Pastor Ivor Richardson. He is a man of God. He is also a man of prayer, and we just want to lift him up as we wait. We're going to have a meditation song, and then the next voice you will hear is that of Pastor Ivor Richardson.
There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried. For in the sanctuary, God is here. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the burdens you have carried, for in the sanctuary God is here. He is here. God is Good evening, everyone. Good evening to our local congregation here in White Plains and to all the viewers online, wherever you may be. A happy, blessed evening to you. I'm overjoyed and delighted to be with you this evening. Uh, what a privilege to be able to speak to you on the topic, doubt the killer of your faith. Doubt the killer of your faith. Let us pray. God reports this brief semantic prayer, asking that you humble our spirits, that you uh, quiet our souls for a while, Lord, open up our ears and our understanding that we might be able to understand what this word is saying to us tonight. We pray that you will bless all the hearers and help us not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Lord, we love you. We give ourselves in obedience to you. We give ourselves in faith to you. We present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy, except to God, which is our reason of service. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to be used by you. And we pray that this word may bless all the hearers. We ask this to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So tonight's topic is based on the book of James. In fact, the sermonette uh, is really a travel through uh, a few verses of James, the apostle. James uh, is the great apostle who uh, broke down for us that faith without works is dead. The other concept that he breaks down is that you cannot have doubt. He says, never doubt because doubt is dangerous to your faith, dangerous to your prayer life. And so each Christian needs to have a prayer life and if you don't have a prayer life, you're living as a dangerous as a Christian, you're living idly where the devil can find things for you to do. The scripture tells us that the devil finds things for idle hands to do. And so uh, James uh, in verse chapter one, starting around verse five, he says, if any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, that's very important, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter being double-minded and unstable in every way 
must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. And so if you want to receive something from God, you cannot be double-minded. You must be a person of strong faith. See, once you let doubt in and the seeds of doubt are sown in your life and in your prayer life, you're in trouble. And, and so your prayer will be effective. And as Christians who are walking with God, especially those of us who are walking with God a number of years now, we want to make sure that our prayer life is effective because prayer is important. Now, there's a saying that prayer changes things. But I want to tell you, that's not quite true. That's not quite accurate. It's the lack of prayer that changes things. See, prayer ensures that the will of God is done in our lives. And, and so that's what you want. You want the will of God to be done in your life. Now, we talk about as persons having a status quo, and we say that's bad. You shouldn't have a status quo. You should look to change. You should look to be a leader. You should look for things that are new. But with God, God has established a plan for our life. The scripture says that God says, I'm making plans for you, plans to establish you and not to harm you. And so it is the lack of prayer that changes things. Hope that makes sense to you. Let's think about that for a while. So when we pray, we pray that thy will be done in our lives. And if, if you are praying that the will of God be done in our lives, God, it's what God has laid down, what God has established long ago, the path that God has said for you should be done. And so when you don't pray, you, you're you not ensuring that God's will will be done in your life. But uh, but we understand it through a human understanding, through a catchphrase that says, when you pray, things have changed. But we don't want God's plan to change. God's plan, God is the same today. He has same yesterday, same today, will be the same tomorrow. That God has set down his plan for you. And so when you don't pray, it's the lack of prayer that changes things. The lack of prayer causes you to be exposed to the evil one. The lack of prayer causes your faith to grow weak. The lack of prayer causes you to have doubt. And so doubt is very damaging to us as persons. Doubt makes us doubt ourselves, which is a terrible condition to have mentally. Doubt erodes our confidence. Doubt erodes our prayer life doubt erodes of faith and then now we're weak and we're tr in trouble and we can hardly ask God for the things that we need. Let's go on. Looking, at ver looking down to verse 12, James tells us that we will experience trials and temptations in this life and that's why it's important to have a strong and robust pr prayer life. Look at verse 12, it says, blessed is anyone who endures temptation, such a one has stood the tests and will receive a crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I'm being tempted of God, for God cannot tempt by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted when one's own desires being a lord and enticed by it. And so James wants to understand that God tempts no one. When we're tempted, often it's a result of our actions or the actions of someone around us. It's action, it's human activity that doesn't understand the nature of God, doesn't understand being grounded in God's grace, in God's mercy, in God's forgiveness. And so we are exposed and the evil one comes and tempts us or people, place around us that may tempt us. And sometimes we think that's coming from God, but he says, no, it doesn't come from God. It comes from our own desires when we don't follow the precepts and principles of God. Let's go on to verse 19 of chapter one. So Paul, James tells us we need to be not only what? Hearers of the word. We need to listen and hear. And in, in, let's look at verse 19, where he tells us that. He said, you must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness, rank, growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness implanted by God's word that has power 
to save your souls. And so we're prompted that listening is important. Because often, if, you, if you're not really listening, you're going to miss key things. And sometimes we don't listen to each other. We talk at each other. No one wants to listen. Everyone wants to talk. But listening is important. Listening is where you can discern uh, the, pro the person's problem if you generally interested in helping them. Listening is where you can apply the word that God has given to you in your heart and your spirit that you can help them to come out of their situation. And so in this section, uh, James tells us, be not only a listener or a hearer, but be a doer of God's word. Let's look at verse 22. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any hears of the word and are not doers, they are like those who look, in, look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and going away, immediately forget what they, they look like. But those who look into the perfect law of liberty and pre preserve being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in doing, in their doing. And so that's important. In this section, uh, he also tells us that the word is important, that religion, true religion that is, is important. And, and so let's look at verse 26 of uh, chapter one. It says, if any think they are religious, do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts. Their religion is worthless. Verse 27, religion that is pure and you undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their dis distress and to keep oneself unstained in the world. And so James's charge was that we have to uh, be able to keep ourselves pure, unstained, holy, grounded in prayer. That, that's extremely important. Let's look at verse 26. of chapter one, Paul tells us, I'm sorry, James tells us that the unbridled tongue will get us in trouble, that we have to learn to bridle our tongue and be careful. The scripture tells us that when we speak, we should speak with a little salt as if we're seasoned with salt so that we know how to talk to everyone so that we do not offend those who may be babes in Christ and those who may be suffering, those may, who may be hurting. And that's very important. Let's jump over to chapter three, starting at around verse 13. And so James tells us in dealing with God and in presenting ourselves, we must realize that we must use the wisdom of God, the two types of wisdom. Let's look at verse 13 of chapter three. Who is wise, understand and among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false in your truth. Such wisdom, such wisdom does not come from above but it's earthly, unabsorbed, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there, uh, there will be also disorder, wickedness of every kind. And, and so that's the world's wisdom. The world's wisdom is a wicked wisdom that thinks of selfish things, promotes itself at the expense of others. But James wants to caution us. He says there's a different kind of wisdom that we need to be aware of. And looking at uh, chapter three and verse 20, 17, I'm sorry, verse 17, chapter three, verse 17, he says, but the wisdom from above is first pure. God's wisdom is pure. 
than, than peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and of good fruits without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. And so when we allow God to fill us with wisdom and give us his wisdom, when we immerse in that wisdom, we not only know how to make peace, but we know how to bring comfort to those who are hurting. We know how to bring cheer to those who are depressed. We know how to be a co-partner in ministry with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And that's important. Let's go down to uh, chapter, chapter four, verses one. In this section, James tells us that we have to be careful of our walk with the Lord and in our association with those we come into contact with. Now, in our walk, we'll come into contact with persons who are unregenerated. In other words, I mean, who haven't given their lives to Christ, who follow a worldly agenda, who are wicked and promote evil and selfishness. And it says that we have to be careful how we communicate with them that we do not take part in their wicked deeds or evil acts and we do not disgrace a witness in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're cautioned to remember that we have to be careful of those kinds of friendship. It says that friendship with worldly people or the world or world philosophy is to be at enmity with God. And that's such a strong language. And so let's look at verses one. Those conflicts and disputes among you where do they come from? They do not come from your cravings that are at war within you. You want something and you do not have it. So you commit murder and you covet something and not obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts you do not have because you do not ask. You do not ask, so you do not receive because you wrongly ask in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. And, and so this shows us that our motive for our prayer must be right. And so faith will kill, doubt will kill your faith and that weakens your prayer life. And also if your motive is wrong, as we're seeing here in this section, that if you're asking for just personal pleasure or worldly pleasures, that God is not going to grant that. You see, God grants what is in accordance with his will. And if your walk is correct with the Lord this evening, my Christian brothers and sisters, then you recognize that it's not according to our desires or wishes, but it's according to the will of God, that God grants your requests. And if you're weak in faith, if you're double-minded, God will not grant your requests. God grants requests to those who are earnest, those who are sincere, those who are serious. See, this Christian walk is serious business. It's not something we take lightly. It's not something you just do on the Sabbath and no other day. It's a lifestyle every day, in and out, in your walk, when you're with worldly people, when you're with Christian people. All the time, God is observing our deeds and actions. And so when we are witness for Jesus, we must walk right. We must talk right. We must read our scripture. We must have a prayer life. A Christian doesn't have a prayer life. It's a Christian that's setting themselves up for failure. And that's not something you want to do in your Christian life. You want to be victorious. You want to be intentional. You want to be purposeful. And you want to be successful in your walk with God. We recognize that this is a hurting world. And the world needs results. The world needs blessing. The world needs wisdom. The world needs counsel. The world needs advice. The world needs uh, cheer. The world needs uh, a happier spirit where the spiritual songs and hymns that we sing will bless those around us. We're starting now. Uh, how to praise God. And, and so praise is important, not only for, to help us develop our Christian muscles, our sense of worship, our sense of praise, our sense of 
devotion to God, but we want to encourage that in those around us and those we come into contact with. And, and, and so our prayer must be important. Now, prayer is powerful and beneficial, but we need to be careful what we ask God for. Because if we keep asking God, and especially we have strong faith for something, we're not ready for it. We're not going to be successful or victorious. In fact, if we get something before we're ready for it, it could devastate our lives. And so each step of the way, you want to ask God for what you believe you can handle or what God's spirit is telling you in, in faith you can handle. And so you don't ask more than you can handle. Also, God doesn't grant more than you can handle because God knows what we're capable of. He, we, the one entity we can't fool is the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees us through and through. He sees us exposed. He sees us bare. He sees our motive. He sees our agenda. He understands and knows even ahead of time where we're headed. And, and so because James tells that God is looking to reap a harvest of righteousness, our prayer must be in line with that. Remember I said earlier that Praying ensures that God's will be done, will be done in your life, in the world, in the community, in all that you do. When you pray, you ensure that that's going to happen. When you don't pray, you're opening up your ministry and mission to things that are not in line with God's will. And that's when you're out of step. You don't want to find yourself in such a position. Let's look at chapter 5 and verses 13, starting around 13 to 16. Here, James talks about the prayer of faith. And that's important. The prayer of faith. Let's read a few verses, starting around verse 13. He says, are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are uh, any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church. Have them pray over them. Anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who commits sins will be forgiven. What a beautiful promise here that James is inspired to write to the saints, to tell them that we serve a God, that if we worship him, if we praise him, if we have faith without doubt, you see, once James has never allowed doubt in, once doubt comes in, your prayer is weak and your faith is weak, everything about you is weak, you become double-minded. But when you have strong faith, when you allow God to operate fully through your life, when you're fully committed to him, that your prayer as elders in the church, laying on the hands on those who are sick and those who need cheer, and those who are depressed, that their situation will be confident, their situation will be healed, and they'll be set right in God. And the sick will be healed. And also, those who have committed sins and showing remorse for sins, the Lord Jesus Christ will forgive those sins through the power of the Father and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And what a blessing and a promise that is. I want you to remember, if you remember nothing else in this brief section, this brief talk, whenever you find yourself doubting how far you can go, just remember how far you've come in the Lord. <clears throat> remember everything that you have failed, all the struggles, all the battles that you've won. Also remember that all of the fears you have can be overcome through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. James calls us to be strong in the Lord, the power of his might, to not have doubt, not be double-minded, not be fickle, because a double-minded person is fickle in all their ways and cannot serve God. The scripture says, no one putting their hand to the plow and looking back is fit for God's kingdom. And that's because if you're plowing and you're looking back, you're going to make crooked roads. God wants you to make straight roads. See, when we serve God, it's forward match. There's no, if you look at the arm of God, there's no uh, 
bad place. See, because you're not supposed to turn around. Is that with God, you go forward, 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 armored Christian soldiers marching us to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. And so we need to ask God to help us get rid of any self-doubt we we'll have, anything that's unsure, anything that's sinful, anything that's wicked in our spirit, to empty ourselves as an empty vessel, asking the Lord Jesus Christ to fill us with his spirit, through his mercy, through his might, through his righteousness, through his forgiveness, and through his love for us. Because God tells us that through the love of Christ, we can be conquerors in all that ails us, conquerors in all that disturbs us, conquerors in all that may seek to knock us off the path. We need to ask God to define for us or to identify us for us the path he's called us to walk, to walk in that path each day, step by step, with resolve, with seriousness, with commitment, with prayer and thanksgiving and devotion to God. Do not have any doubt in your life tonight, my Christian brothers and sisters. Doubt will ruin your Christian witness. Doubt will ruin your Christian walk. Doubt will make you ineffective. And so what Christian doesn't want to be effective? What Christian doesn't want their prayer to be answered? What Christian doesn't want the power of God to be present in their life, in their congregation, and in those around us? And so if we're going to have that as our standard, we must not allow the seeds of doubt to be planted in our lives. Doubt, get rid of doubt. James is telling us, get rid of doubt. And if we have faith, strong faith, that we will be able to ask correctly and we'll be able to receive. It says, ask and shall be given. Knock and the door be opened unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Up, allow the power of the Spirit of Christ to operate fully in your life tonight and God be sure to bless you. In the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen. We just want to thank Pastor Ivor Richardson for those beautiful words in message. What did you get from the message tonight? What did I get from the message? Doubt, the killer of your faith, that's the topic. It is important to have a strong and robust prayer life. Doubt will kill your faith. God grants requests to those who are earnest, serious, and sincere. If you want to be in, intentional, purposeful, and successful in your walk with God, if we worship, praise, and have faith in God, our prayers will be answered. Doubt will ruin your Christian life. Thank you so much, Pastor Richardson. We do have a few um, comments in our chat. I see Angela. Is there Sister Angela? Um, we for Web One and Sister Margaret Benson, who has joined us on our chat tonight. Thank you for commenting. Just want to wish you all a wonderful night. We are closing down. We're just going to have a short prayer before we leave. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Dear loving Lord, oh God, we thank you for your blessings tonight. We thank you for all the prayer requests that have been lifted up to you once more. We, we pray that you will bless us, dear Lord. You will help us to receive all that you have in store for us. And we thank you for this opportunity that you have given to us to be together once more as we leave. We ask that you will continue to bless us. Thank you for your words. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Just want to thank all our participants tonight. Pastor Richardson, who, did, who was our speaker. Sister Virginia McDonald, who did the prayer as well. Take care for now. This is FWP Center, the first Seventh-day Adventist Church of White Plains. Thank you.